Hi, everyone. I'm Svetlana Sakova, developer advocate at JetPrice. In this video, I want to talk about one of the new features of the Kotlin 1.5 release, inline value classes. In simple words, an inline class can wrap a value without any additional overhead. This feature has been available for some time. It was added in experimental state in Kotlin 1.2.30. And Kotlin 1.5 stabilizes this functionality with some changes. Let's start with an example. I want to use Duration API as an example to define a problem and discuss different solutions. Duration represents the amount of time between two different time instances. Without inline classes, duration can be implemented either by primitives or using a regular class. Let's try primitives first. We need a function that does something after given timeout. How to pass a timeout parameter? We can use primitives, like long. However, it might be really confusing on the call side. We pass an integer constant, but we don't Im know immediately whether it's seconds or milliseconds, or I don't know, minutes. It's not a type safe solution. We could sort of overload this function by adding the time units to its name. But it's too verbose. Defining a separate duration class solves the type safety problem. We can define auxiliary functions like seconds or minutes to emphasize the time units. It's no longer prone to use the new greet after timeout function. We have explicit units in the code, cool. The only problem of this approach is that an extra object is allocated to store the time duration. After getting type safety, we lost performance. Inline value classes solve that. They combine performance of primitive types and type safety of regular classes. Starting from 1.5, you define an inline class differently, as a value class, annotated with the JVM inline annotation. But the concept is the same. Under the hood, the compiler replaces the duration parameter with long. That means no extra object is allocated when you pass a value. In this example, the compiler replaces the duration argument value with the underlying long constant in the bytecode. In the next example, we use the nice seconds function, which returns the duration value, and the compiler also replaces it with a corresponding constant under the hood. That's what I mean by saying that inline value classes combine the performance of primitive types and type safety of regular classes. No extra object allocated, it's primitives under the hood. An explicit type units in the code demonstrate the type safety. Duration is represented by a separate type, it's not any number. The Kotlin standard library already defines several useful inline value classes. First of all, note that the standard library contains the experimental duration class, which should be used to express durations for timeouts and other needs. You can't call the constructor directly. You create duration instances using auxiliary functions defined in duration companion object, like duration seconds or duration minutes. This class was uh, available in experimental state since 1.3.50, and it stays experimental so far, because it was recently significantly changed both in the API and internal representation. Before, it stored the underlying value as double property not long. We use it as an example in the presentation. In real-life tasks, you don't need to redefine it. The library class duration does the job. Other useful types implemented via inline value classes mechanism are unsigned number types. For each primitive integer type, there is a corresponding unsigned type, like uint or ulong. They store no negative values occupying the same memory as their regular counterparts. Under the hood, each of them is defined as an inline value class, a wrapper of the corresponding integer type. Like in this case, uint is a wrapper of an int value. You can convert a regular integer value to unsigned value by calling a function like to ubyte or to uint. Alternatively, you can define a constant with a U tag. Arithmetic operations and comparisons are supported for them. 
and sign types were available for a long time in experimental state. And now they became stable. But note that array of unsigned types remains in, bed, in beta. Of course, you can define your own inline value classes. You mark the class as a value class and annotate it with a JVM inline annotation. An inline class can be a wrapper either for primitive or for any reference type like string. Inline class is a wrapper for only one property, and this property should be read only. Mutable wars aren't allowed. As for regular classes, inside inline value classes, you can define member functions and properties. Since inline value class is a wrapper over one property, other properties are allowed only if they don't have backing fields. They should compute the value on each access, like in this example. Mutable properties without backing fields are also allowed. Don't confuse inline value classes with inline functions. Member functions of an inline value class don't get inlined. They are different concepts. You can also define an init block to provide the constructor logic. Inline value classes are supported by the Kotlin X serialization library. You can mark an inline value class as serializable, and when encoding data to JSON format, you see only the underlying value included, not the whole class. If a regular class is encoded, you see it in the output as an extra class. Like in this example, you see that the color is represented by a class having an RGB property. For inline classes, the value is encoded directly and decoded correspondingly. Here, we now defined color as an inline value class. And you can notice that the integer RGB value is serialized directly as color. Let's now glance at what happens under the hood. If you expect that an inline value class is always replaced with underlying value, that's not correct. The wrapper is not always eliminated in the bytecode. It happens only when possible. It works very similarly to built-in primitive types. When you define a variable or pass it directly to a function, its type gets replaced with the underlying value. Here, during the compilation time, is duration, but it's replaced with a primitive type in the bytecode. If you store a duration value in a collection or pass it uh, to a generic function, however, it gets boxed. Boxing and unboxing are made automatically by the compiler, so you don't need to think about it, but it's useful to understand how it works. If a function takes an inline class as a parameter, its name uh, is mangled. That means the compiler has a suffix to its initial name, like for greet after timeout in this example. That happens for two reasons. First, that allows a reloading a function to take two different inline value classes that trap the same value. Like in this example, we have two different record functions taking name and password as parameters. Without mangling, they would have the same JVM signature in the bytecode, and such code won't compile. The second reason for mangling is to refrain its accidental usage from Java. Kotlin usages are type safe. You can only pass the correct type. But if you use it from Java, you can have the same confusion problems as when using primitive types. To prevent them, both these invocations don't compile in Java. When the function name is mangled, you no longer can call it from Java. Java is only the mangled name, but you can't call it because it's not a valid identifier. If you want to use a function taking an inline value class argument from Java, use a workaround. You can provide an explicit JVM name for this function. That changes the underlying name in the bytecode and makes it visible by this name and usable from Java. I want to point out one peculiarity of defining inline classes in the library. Imagine you are a library author and you define an inline class as a part of the public API. If you want to later change the type of the underlying value, it's a breaking change. Since any function using this inline class is compiled to the one using the underlying type, that breaks. That's what happens with duration. And that demonstrates why it wasn't a part of the stable API. So change is a breaking change. We do want to stabilize this functionality soon, but as always, we need your help to battle test it. Please share your feedback and your use cases. 
If you follow the language changes and were using inline classes before, you might be surprised. Why the syntax changes? It was inline class before, but now it's value class annotated with the JVM inline annotation. Why? The term inline class turned out to be a bit confusing with inline functions. Some might expect that all members of uh, the inline class are inlined, which is not the case. Or one could think that an inline class, like inline function, will always be replaced with the underlying value, which is also not correct. What's important, inline class has now become a part of the bigger story, a case of a value class with a specific optimization. You don't need to know these details to use uh, the new syntax right now. But if you want to learn more about value classes, please watch a separate video about its planned functionality. If you want to learn more details about inline value classes, please check the description in our blog and in the documentation. Thank you for your attention and let's Scotland.